Hi and welcome to Nerd Gamers. The game today we're going to be playing is Rogue as part of our video gaming history segment. Okay, let's get started. Now, Rogue was originally developed by Michael Toy and also Glenn Wickman. Uh, this was in around 1980 when the first game was developed. It was later modified and ported by Ken Arnold and John Lane. And that kind of saw in later PC releases around about 1983. Now, a little bit about the history. What is Rogue? Now, Rogue is a turn-based adventure game which you have to plumb the depths and go find what the Amulet of Yondor. And once you find it, you're able to go back up the steps and escape the dungeon. Now, this game is the basically the trope namer for a whole genre of games. They're called roguelikes because of this game. This is the sort of like the pinnacle of it. This is where it all started. And we've seen games come out of this um, dungeon crawlers. Uh, you see a very lot of heavy influence from this game. So you'll find um, ASCII-based games have been had a lot of influence from this. Just RPGs in general have got have had influence from this game. So you see its influences in games such as Dwarf Fortress, Bard's Tale, NetHack, Diablo, uh, Torchlight. These these games all spring from this source. Now, some of the games have moved from the turn-based over to the real-time, but it still uses the procedurally generated dungeons, the way you get the monsters at different levels. You can, um, you're picking up random equipment, not knowing what it is, having to identify the equipment. There are so many bits and pieces that we just see in everyday RPGs that were just formalized and crystallized in this game. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a little look and just lead you through what Rogue is all about. So we're going to do, creating a, a random character called Rodney. You get, you've got basic stats. There's uh, hits, strength, armor, experience. You start off at level one. There's nothing else I can do. Now as you can see, you've got on the screen uh, we're in a room and with the little yellow smiley face, that's us. The E off to the side represents an emu. And what we can do is you can use the arrow keys to move around. Now that creature is not moving and we've just picked up a two-handed sword. So if I press I, we can see what we've got on in our inventory. Some food, because you need to eat in this game. If you don't eat, you'll eventually go weak, faint, and die through starvation. And what we're going to do is we're going to wield our two-handed sword. Now, it could be cursed. It could be a risk. However, it could be one of the best weapons we've got hold of. Now, I'm going to press T to throw something, and I'm going to throw some arrows because anything where I don't have to get closer to another creature that just reduces our chance of losing hit points, reduces our chances of dying. Now you see there, over there is an H, that is a hobgoblin. So again, I'm going to throw arrows and just by pressing the A key, I can repeat my action over and over again. Now for those two creatures, I've picked up a total of six experience points. When I get sufficient enough experience points, I'll get up a level, I'll get more hit points, and my combat abilities will just generally improve. And I'm just trying to melee this Kestrel, and that Kestrel's only worth one. Now, bats, that, that's, that's that B. Darn annoying, I can tell you, because they move two squares at a time, so they can actually hit you and move away before you can do anything. So normally your way of defeating them is to take a step backwards. So we're seeing most of the basic creatures for this area. Now we've got to be careful because we've lost two hit points already. Now unlike some games like um, NetHack, where if you really know what you're doing, you can basically be guaranteed to complete the game. There's just so much random variety in Rogue that it can be next to impossible to actually win. I mean... There we go. I got myself killed there. I mean, partially I should have maybe checked to see what I had inventory, quaffed a random potion, but I just came down. 
there's there's not a huge amount of cases where people have shown to actually have won the game. People have won. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's totally doable. I've personally never done it, but I have no heard of people who have completed this game. But yeah, so you you can start to see some of the elements of the the game itself. I mean, we have uh, range missile weapons, melee weapons. You got stats on them, and as you can see here, we've got um, D plus one ring mail. So normally uh, ring mail is armor class four, but because it's plus one, it's armor class five. Helps means not going to get hit as much. Our mace goes bonus to hit and bonus to damage. And, this, and we, whilst we can know the basic elements of... Ooh, there we go. We managed to get to level two this time. So whilst we might know... And so we got one extra hit point. So whilst, whilst, we, whilst we might know the basic information about an item, we don't know the specifics. Now, one of the things is also in this game, as I was saying, you've got food. Now, in order to stop you from just grinding a level repeatedly, there's a limited amount of resources, so food becomes very rare. And you desperately need food, because towards the end of the game, it can become nearly impossible to actually find any food. So you have to conserve all your resources at nearly every single stage. Now, the S there is a snake. Which is, they're not so bad, but it's when you come across an R. They're the rattlesnakes. Those can be terrifying for a long time because rattlesnakes have the potential to actually damage your strength. Ah, we just made it to level 3. So that's another few hit points. I mean, our first roll, we got 13 hit points. It was terrible. This one's not so bad. We've managed to get a whole load more hit points. And of course, the hit points that you gain are completely random, like so many things. And you see here, we've run up to a wall, and there's nothing there. By hitting the S key, we can search the area for a secret door. And so even then, you've got all the classic elements of an RPG, secret doors, Random items. I mean, one of the things is going to start looking at the inventory more in a moment. And here we go. Ah, now we've entered an area which is completely in darkness. So we can only see around a certain number of squares. And even when we've searched the room, we can only tell what's in there when we're in um, just in our immediate vicinity because of the light. So as you can see, we've got some food, we've got a scroll which is unidentified. Brown, white, cyan, and aquamarine potion. We got some armor, another weapon. Now we could remove our, take off our armor, and we're going to wear new armor. As you can see, we immediately we know if it's cursed or not. Weapons not so quick, but then you can just simply try and wield it, and then stop wielding it. And if you can't unwield it, then you know it's cursed. So curses. Very, very annoying, because generally curse items are a lot worse. Ah, now I've just fallen into a trap, a bear trap, which means I have to basically try and escape it. You have to... There we go, that's that little purple symbol. have managed to escape it, but later on, traps get more and more common, just like everything else, and it generally just gets harder and harder. And some of the creatures that you come across, you get trolls, which actually regenerate your health. Um, you can come across dragons, uh, vampires, uh, I think there's a Venus flytrap. Now we start to collect up some of these cyan potions. The more we get of those, the more likelihood they are actually healing potions. But it's not guaranteed. So at some point we need to try and identify these, but it's always risky because we could drink um the only way to sort of like identify a potion is to drink it and if it happens to be a potion of poison you lose strength you don't want to do that too soon and so we're starting to get hungry so we're gonna leave it a little bit while because we've still got some time awesome we found some more food we just killed a kestrel that just turned up and we're making it down to the next level even better more food just kind of what we need
Now normally what we'll try and do is find a scroll of identify. And ah, now this is a scroll of magic mapping. This is excellent. It shows all secret doors and we can take the most efficient route around the level. So what we're going to do is we're going to search in here first. And all secret doors are revealed so we don't have to worry about trying to find them. It doesn't reveal traps, mind you. We can still fall through traps. One of the worst traps you'll ever find is one that just dumps you straight down to the next level. Because after that you get no choice. We're just using up those arrows, just get them out of the way. It helps reduce the amount of hits that we take. And we're just going to keep throwing these arrows. Manage to defeat the bat. Now these little things just there, gold. Gold helps add towards our final score. Oh, and also, if you notice, starting to meet uh, more and more rooms that are actually in permanent darkness. This is something that starts to get more common as you go down. And also, if you go down far enough, ah, uh, ice monster. They're actually quite tough, worth a lot of experience. But also, whilst they're tough, they're also a bit fragile. One hit and you tend to defeat them. Ah, now, we just went faint from the lack of food. Didn't notice that we went weak. So, um, that's one of those times kind of by that point need to make sure I'm eating or else in the middle of combat I'll just faint and that's it if you faint you run out of moves and they'll, they won't bother stopping they'll just keep attacking you so you can quickly find yourself dead now whilst you can move diagonally you can't attack diagonally so I'm not sure why they ended up programming that so the implant is sort of like partial diagonal movement and actions but not complete Ah, now, we just found a teleporter. Just doing a quick search, there was nothing there. And if you no started to notice, there's a pattern appearing in... Ah, now you see that orc. As soon as you turn into the room, they'll try and effectively protect an item, uh, the gold. And they'll move straight towards it. So it's useful if there's gold lying on the floor. But orcs can are a little bit more powerful. Ah, that's a zombie. A lot harder hitting. Now we're going to try and wield the two-handed sword because generally it'll be more damaging as long as it's not cursed. It's not cursed because we can not we can continue wielding it. Now, as I was saying, you might notice a pattern in some of the rooms. Just deal with this one first, and I'll explain it. Now, as you can see, there's three rooms on the top, three rooms in the middle, and three rooms on the bottom. That's how all the levels are generated. Ah, now you see that? That's a rattlesnake. We want to kill this. We don't want to let it hit us. Because if that rattlesnake hits us, it can drain our strength. And you need your strength, because it means that you hit it for less, you'll cause less damage. So in those of you who have played RPGs before, you can probably see all the elements. Your inventory management, we haven't got too many items at the moment. Ah, Leprechaun. We want to avoid hitting him directly because if we do, he'll steal some of our gold and he can just disappear. And we managed to kill him. And yeah, it'll just steal a portion of your gold. Starting to run about arrows, but it's worth it. Anything that reduces, oh, right, rattlesnake. Yes, yeah, so when they get their critical hits, it's that chance of losing the strength, which is always terrifying. We did manage to defeat it. Now, thankfully, this is kind of the big point where they start appearing, appearing but they start reducing in numbers. Now, if you see me zipping all over the screen, that's because I'm using a sort of like a fast travel function just means that instead of going through every single square I just tell it right zip through until something occurs All right we've got a zombie we're gonna wait a turn and progression is roughly 
one level uh, for every dungeon level you go down, but r ideally you really need to be picking up experience as quickly as possible because it just gets harder and harder as you go through the actual levels until you get to a point where it's effectively they made it so that your progression rate is slower than the increase in difficulty. So it often comes down to just pure chance whether or not you survive. And as you can see, it was already starting to... Oh, there we go, we defeated the rattlesnake, made it to level 6. We're already starting to completely find whole, almost whole levels which are just made up of darkness. Hemlock Staff. So as you can see, the zap, uh, if we zap, we can use staffs. Don't know what they do. So probably experiment. Not yet. We're going to find a weakish creature. Problem is, is, each of the items you can never tell in advance. There's a limited number of effects that everything can do. But you don't know what it is they will do exactly. Right, we're going to zap that staff. No idea. Zap that direction. But staff again. Aha! This staff causes damage. So if we get up close, right, we can use it as a weapon. So that's good to know. Ah, right. Now you see, the rattlesnake bit us and it reduced our strength. We now only have 15 strength. This is not good. So before I can really reliably raise my strength, I would need to restore my uh, restore myself to the original strength. And that was a sleeping mist. But fortunately, there was no creatures nearby. Defeat the bats. Just get that out of the way. Oh, it's also because this is an old DOS game. If you hit F10, you get the old uh, boss key. So the boss couldn't tell that you were actually playing rogue. And now here's part of the inventory management. We can't carry thing, anything else. So I look through, see what we've got. I'm going to drop unnecessary items. We can only have one item per square. One of the Issues of sort of like the old style gaming, it's a limited number of items that it could hold, but it's something that they didn't exactly have a lot to code with, really. And also, your inventory is limited not only by your space, but also your strength as well. So, you can actually be too weak to carry stuff as well. So, you can't carry around five different sets of plate mail. But yes, potions. Uh, potions might never be the same from one game to the next. I mean, just say just because you learned what healing potion was in one game doesn't mean. Oh, darts, terrible. They they also reduce your strength. There's just so many ways of actually losing. Right. Kind of sped through that too quickly. Made a mistake. Gonna quaff and I just quaffed a potion of paralysis. That's not good, so we're going to acquire Coughing J. That's a potion of haste. Thankfully, we get out of there. That's good to know. Uh, so what we're going to do is read D. Now, uh, in glows blue, that means we've just read a scroll of enchant weapon. Uh, that was a scroll of teleportation. Confuses you for a few moments, so you do have to be careful. Now, we're going to use the staff here, because centaurs can hit for a lot, and so can the orcs, and we're kind of really in a bad state, as you can see, one health left. Read D. Red... Um, Red glowing hands means you've got confused monster. And so, of course, I won't know from one game to the next which scroll does it. It's useful. 
And sometimes when you read high pitch, uh, that scare or aggravate monster, I can never remember. So we've got no idea what a healing potion is. Oh, uh, that was a potion of poison. So I've managed to pick up a whole bunch of really bad stuff and I managed to use it one after another. But at least we got some hit points now. Now the nice thing is, is when you go up higher levels, you do start regenerating health a lot faster than when you were at lower levels. But still not something that we can rely on. And there we go, the leprechaun hit us, and so we lost some of our gold. Now as you can see, some of these passageways start getting a bit more complicated. Oh, there's some armor over there. Leather armor. Well, try taking off and wearing that leather armor. Can be useful to keep some leather armor around. That's because there are creatures called rust monsters. If you come across a rust monster, and if it hits your nice metal armor, it'll start rusting it. And all your enchantments will slowly disappear. Just gotta watch this centaur, because they're very damaging. Right, just going to drop back these items down, because I don't need to be carrying them. So yes, yeah, so keeping around leather armor can be advantageous, So because the rust monster just can't rust it. And you can also enchant your leather armor as well. So you can see, that whilst this kind of one of the things they're missing from a modern RPG is a crafting system, and that's about it. All the elements you'll see from all the modern RPGs, they're all here. So we're still going through, we're still managing to find some places to go around. We haven't died yet, which is always very good in Rogue. I mean, oh, that was an arrow trap, and ooh, that's a quagoth. Um, Quagga, a more difficult creature and one of the new ones that we're coming across because we are on dungeon level 9. And we're only level 7. Ugh, another dart. Thankfully it didn't reduce our strength any further. Now there's nothing that we can search there. It is worth going around because we might find either some food or we might find some items is only ah now there a we're going to take off the armor aquator so it's called an aquator not a rust monster so what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to the leather armor for the time being we're going to face these creatures for a few levels now. And there we go, we found a ring. Rings are very powerful, uh, permanent magic items effectively. Uh, but there's a whole mix between good and bad ones. This is the problem, once you can find lots of items, you don't know which is going to be, be advantageous and which is going to be a disadvantage. And it's just really hit and miss at times. Um, we've got no identification scroll, so I don't know if I should wear that ring. And that ring could end up killing me if I put it on. However, it could save my life. There's just no way of knowing. And sometimes in Rogue, you'll just start doing things out of desperation. You try and do it when there's a point where you've got more chance of surviving and you've got some backup and you've got some counters and stuff like that but at the end of the day you have to start doing something at some point and this is its difficulty is, is a mix between you actually having to have the skill in order to do this and also just pure and utter luck and as you can see again we're now mostly in completely dark rooms out of all of this we found one room that wasn't dark just watch the health. 
And we've had a really good run on this level. We've found two lots of food. That's very rare and kind of incredibly important. There we go. And we're going to take the shorter route because the sh shorter route means less movement. Less movement means less starvation. Don't need to run across the top. I know that there's going to be no doors at the top. Ah, now. Meeting some more of those creatures. Rattlesnakes. I think that's a slime monster. Now what we need to do is go through, check our inventory. We've got some stars. We've got various potions. We're going to drop the single arrow. Uh, drop the potion of poison. We don't need that. Is there anything else we can get rid of the poison? Two potions of paralysis. Now, if I remember, I think you can throw the potions of paralysis at a monster and it will work. So we kind of want to keep hold of that. Thankfully, we kind of can't carry any more because we're just running out of the strength to do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that armor. Uh, it not, might not be the wisest ideas, but we need these consumables. Oh dear, right. Oh no, we just got hit in the shoulder. Um, DC. Right, ah, oh, scroll of teleportation. There's just so many good things, really. Right, okay, let's try quaffing an M. That's increased strength. Unfortunately, oh, that's uh, blindness. Quaff L, we can sense magic. There's a lot of stuff over there. Probably going to be dangerous. Potion of Confusion. And seeing that we're kind of a little bit... Ah, there we go. And that's Potion of... Um, got to be careful here. There we go. We're no, no longer confused. We're finding some good items at the moment. Uh, we could, oh, right. Really be careful. That is a Yeti. That is a powerful and dangerous creature. Thankfully, we leveled up. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting fight because where well, there's a lot of magic like that, there's a good chance that there's a lot of creatures as well. It's kind of like a, a zoom. Gonna use the staff a few times. Right, there we go. We've defeated the Zieti. Now each of these creatures can cause significant damage. So we kinda gotta be careful. And also, we might get ourselves trapped here. Right. All right. We, we don't have to worry about that creature too much, that creature too much. We're going to throw... No, we can't throw the paralysis potions. Um, hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. We don't. Oh, hey, self is so useful. We want to save that where possible, but we're really low on health. So what we're going to do is going to zap with E. That was a polymorph, I think. Right, we are going to be screwed here. So we're going to use teleportation scroll. Get out of there. Oh great, and there's a Yeti. Now I don't want to leave the room. If I leave the room, then that Yeti can actually can become active. So I'm just gonna take a few moments and just whilst I can drop what isn't needed. We've still gotta make our way back down into that room. Now I think yes, Zinc Wand is a scroll of uh sorry of polymorph. I'm going to read the scroll of this and we're gonna hopefully confuse the monster, just make it a little bit easier to kill it. it looks like there's no way down. 
Now, those were items which were useless. Now, we've got most of our health back because of the traveling. Ah, I was going to pick up that armor again. It's already done it for us. Right. Now, the Yeti is back. Just got to watch this again carefully. Rattlesnake, not so much of a problem, but again, we could always, yep, yeah, lose some more strength. Ah, right. Um, we're going to beat a retreat this way. We're going to use our natural regeneration to get some of our health back. Of course, because we're a much higher level, it comes at a much faster rate. Lots of stuff. Ah, we got back some more items. This is good. A new scroll type, which we've not seen before. So, I mean, oh, there we go. So that's uh, like in Dungeons of Dreadmore, you get the zoo. Uh, nymph. Oh, they're annoying. That could steal a magic item. You know what? We're just going to ignore the nymph. It can be just not worth the hassle. Oh no, but they're blocking the way. Whilst they're not worth the hassle, items are more important than the hassle. Okay, we're going to take the risk. Oh, we got it. Normally you don't kill them that quickly. So they end up taking one of your items and it can be then they teleport off and it can just be next to impossible to actually find them um this is actually a brilliant run that we've going through so i'm just going to keep on going with this and don't often get to this far down we oh a little bit too quick got to be really careful at this stage and i'm going to need to be more careful right Okay, I shall be back in just one moment. Sorry about that. I just had a message turn up, so I just dealt with that rather than uh, leave them hanging around. All right, so where were they? Yeah, yes, trying to survive. Oh, God, trolls. Um, yes. Oh, uh, um, yeah, right, we're going... No, 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 no. Ah, oh, I screwed that up. Might be I could use a scroll of teleportation. Okay, here we go. I died. It's very easy to make a mistake in Rogue, even if you're really paying attention, and I wasn't completely. That is your basic Rogue. You're roguelike. This is where a lot of these type of games come from. This is where Dungeons of Dreadmore, the game I'm currently playing for, this is its history right here. Okay, hope you've learned something. Hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you next time.